Um, on the screen you have a mechanical system here and our objective today is to be able to generate a bone graph model from it. So what I want to show you are the steps that you need to follow systematically so that you can generate that bone graph um, in an easy way and with no errors. So let's let's take a look at the um, the system in here and recognize what we have in here. I think one one way to do this is we could even build the bone graph right on the system. Yeah. It might not be a bad idea to do that um, so that we can see the relationship of the physical system to the bone graph model itself. So let's just um, begin over here and I am going to to put the, um, the what I call steps, you know, steps to generate the bone graph. Okay. Steps okay. The very first step is one I would say use a one junction for each distinct velocity. I would say including the reference or the wall in this case to make it to make it easy. So what I would do is I am going to uh, use a red pen so that I indicate the velocity here. This is a one for a you x1 dot let's say the velocity of this one I'm going to put a 1 for x2 dot which is the velocity of the other mass and to make life easier I think I am going to use a 1 for the velocity of the wall <coughs> which is equal 0 and equally on the other side I will put a 1 for the velocity uh, let's see, one velocity of the wall equal to zero. Very good. Step number two you're going to do is um, um, you can say attach, yeah attach the elements that experience those velocities. This includes sources and other elements. Like in this case, um, I would attach a source of flow with the um, velocity of the wall equals to zero. Okay. <coughs> I would say that on this one right here, we have the I element over here with mass with value m two. This one, you have the I element with value m one, and in here we will put the source of flow with value of velocity of the wall equals to zero. Okay? So, um, do we have any other elements that attach to this one junctions? The answer is no. So, I am going to go to the next step, number three, which would be use a zero junction Okay. To uh, represent the velocity differences. Okay. So 
in this case we have um, the velocity differences here what do I mean with that uh, hold on for a second You have you have this um, velocity differences in uh, between this and the wall. There's obviously this element. See the difference between this between these two. These two elements see the difference between these two. This one sees the difference. So <coughs> what I'm trying to say is let's build this zero junction that says. Um, you know, let's act, adopt the convention that we're going to the right. This would be uh, this velocity minus this other one. This is in fact velocity x, no, x sub 2 minus velocity of the wall. That's what it means. Let's create this one too. All right. The velocity of this, this is uh, x1 dot minus x2 dot, okay, and let's, let's continue over here. This is zero, I'm going to put it in this direction because the zero is on the, is on the, on the left hand side and x1 is bigger <coughs> so this one I would say is x1 minus velocity of the wall that's that's what this is okay then step number four I am going to say attach the elements that experience those velocity differences. All right, those and um, the, the, those velocity differences. And so, in this case, let's go first to the one over here. Uh, right here we attach that one that sees what does this one see the C element with value k sub 3 1 over k sub 3 yeah and then we have this you have the damper as well as you have the spring so you have the damper which is R um, with value F B sub 3 and then you have the C element <coughs> the C element which has the um, the value 1 over K sub 2 Okay, the other thing is uh, this one here, it has the element uh, which is a C uh, with value 1 over k sub 1. And I think this basically uh, allows us to uh, complete the bone graph model, except that there's one thing that I'm noticing right now. Do you see this this element over here? This one and then this one. It talks about the friction between this these two. So is is um, that friction is uh, is over here? See, because this is the reference zero. So this this would be an R element with value f b sub 2 and on this other one would be an r element with value 
F B is a one. As far as I'm concerned, this bond graph model is good enough to put it into the CAMG software because it has enough information that is for the software to number the bonds and um, it has enough information to to continue with the um, you know with the simulation CAMG will do the causal assignments but in this particular case uh, uh, we we are basically finished with that in here, I'm I'm gonna say um, you could you don't even need to simplify it. I think that you could leave it like this and do your simulation. In fact, I would prefer you do that to make your life easier. But if you care, you could you could reduce this. So, but in here you could say um, complete the causal marks and number the bonds. You do that for reference. You do that so that you can actually um, do that. The last thing I'm going to do is to assign that causal mark and, um, <coughs> and be done with this stuff. So I am going to use a blue pen in here. How do you assign the causal marks? First, you assign it to the sources. So this has to be like this because these are flow sources. And the moment you do that to a one junction, this has to be like this. And the same thing over here, see? Then the next step is to put the I element in integral form that sets the flow to this one and makes this two like this. And I do the same thing to this one and mix this two like this. Yeah? And then um, we gotta see what the consequences of that assignment is. You see in here you have this this two uh, flows into the zero. The zero needs one effort, so it's gotta be like this. And the moment you set that, this it makes this one like this. And then over here, you see you have all the um, the ones. This is uh, sorry, I didn't assign it to this one. When you do the one, it makes all the others like this. And then if you have this two. The zero needs one like this. The moment you set that one, makes this other two like this. And finally, <coughs> on this side, you have the two flows in, make zero needs to be like this, and that makes this. And that completes the entire bond graph model. We have drawn it right on the system and to indicate, you know, that this one junction, this element corresponds to this mass, this and this friction corresponds to this, that this element corresponds to this and the wall. So there's a direct correspondence between the physical system and your bone graph.